This is the Digging Deeper podcast, where we engage in today's questions from a Christian perspective. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Alex Zaccaroli. He's the missions and outreach pastor here at Burke Community Church. And today we'll be asking the question, are Christians hypocrites? Is there, I feel like this has a short answer and probably like a really long answer. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you have? What do you have for us, Alec? <laughs> the short answer, yes. Why? Yeah. Christians are human. Uh -huh. And humans struggle with all kinds of sin and hypocrisy can be one of them, certainly. We've all been hypocritical at some point in our lives. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, uh, they are, um, can be. They certainly can be, and it shouldn't shock anybody. Yeah. Now, what I, that's interesting because I think it does shock people. Or maybe it doesn't shock people. No one's like, whoa, really? But um, it does the fact that maybe that specific phrase, Christians are hypocrites, and, like, we get so frustrated. And, like, even, you know, you and I as people mm -hmm. in the church, when we see a Christian who's a hypocrite, we're like, what are you doing? You know, and, like, when we see big leaders make terrible life decisions and we're like, we know you don't preach this and yet you're living this way. Um, why is that a question and why is there maybe a more em emphasis on the hypocrisy of Christians versus just the fact that we know that people are Christian? I mean, um, people are hypocrites mm -hmm. and everyone, no one, you know, is perfectly aligned with their values. What makes us ask that and notice that in Christians? Maybe more. I think, I think we notice it more. I notice it more. So, yeah, it's like, why are Christians so much more vulnerable to the accusation? Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's because we have historically held ourselves out, maybe knowingly, maybe unknowingly, maybe intentionally, sometimes unintentionally, as something other than, than um, sinners, mm. that we have always felt the need to live lifestyles and show, you know, evidence lifestyles that are um, free from sin mm -hmm. and walking in the light and so forth like that. And um, I think that's, you know, part of, we've made that part of our witness rather than being more authentic about the reality of our sin. And as Christians, you know, we are everybody else. Mm. You know, we're, we, we can relate more to our unbelieving brothers and sisters than we can to Jesus mm. when it comes to the state of our sin. And I don't sometimes think that um, we do a good job of, of, um, of voicing that, I guess, mm. of expressing that. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about maybe the fact that we also make ourselves voices voices of moral compass? Mm -hmm. We like to consider ourselves moral compasses and be like, this is what we should do, this is what we shouldn't do. Do you think that contributes to this idea of like, well, you say, you know, you're very loud about what we should do, right? Mm -hmm. Like if we're just, we're the Christians are can be the people who are like, this is the way we should act and this is the way you shouldn't act and like everyone do this and no do this. And then maybe that, that what do you think that, that contributes to? I think that does. I mean, I think a lot of times if our, if our message is always one of don't be a sinner, mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that's a proper message, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. um, obviously it is. But if our message is constantly focused on how to, you know, the importance of avoiding sin, um, without enough of a um, an aspect of it that s addresses why sin is a problem for us mm -hmm. all as humans, then all of a sudden we're kind of pharisaical. We're kind of like, you know, you need to live your life this way, this way, and this way. And the minute somebody looks at our life and says, but I don't see you doing that, mm -hmm. um, then our credibility is completely lost. Mm -hmm. And and that's the issue, It's isn't it? It's our credibility. Um, mm -hmm. I remember before I, I came to faith later in life. I was 28 years old. And there was a long line of Christian hypocrites that I, that turned me, you know, that I, prior to that, I would say, there are a bunch of hypocrites. Mm. You know, there's the Tammy Baker, Tammy and Faye Baker. You got the long line of people who fall, and we have them today. Every, every, every year, there's two or three big name Christian pastors or, or frankly, celebrities mm -hmm. who, um, who, who fall, who, you know, 
fall into sin and their witness is destroyed. And, um, um, and so I think, you know, the issue is, am I being real with you about my own struggles as real with you about my own struggles and my own humanity and my Mm -hmm. own broken state as I am about yours and why you need to fix them? Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. I, I have two thoughts, one from kind of like the Christian camp, one from like a non-Christian camp. Well, First of all, could you like break down what a Pharisee is? I think even even if you're not like churched, yeah. you probably have heard the term Pharisee, but like what they're what were the Pharisees? So the Pharisees were the Jewish leaders of obviously at the time of Jesus and, mm. and well before then. Um, and you know, they were known very much for their emphasis on um, right living basically, on on following the law. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but they 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 were so emphatic about how you you follow every jot and tittle of the law that they looked past people, mm-hmm. um, and they didn't and they, what they didn't realize and was their own hypocrisy is that they would um, tell you to do one thing but they would do something else obviously so that, mm-hmm. so you know if you read you know um, if anybody picks up Matthew twenty three and reads that chapter you know it's Jesus' long line of uh, the woes to the apocrypha, mm. the, the Pharisees, right? And yeah, that's when he just trashes the Pharisees yeah, for about completely. like, yeah. <laughs> and what's the word he uses? Upocrite, right? Yeah. And hypocrite, mm. hypocrite, 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 hypocrite. That was his issue. Mm. Why did Jesus have such a problem with hypocrites? Mm. Because they undermined his message, and um, you know. And so, I sometimes think. What would he say to some of us mm. who are now in charge, not in charge of his church, but ministering in his church? You know mm. what I'm saying? I think it's a fair question for, for pastors to ask themselves. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. And I, I guess that's a good segue because I'm thinking, you know, as someone who's churched and, and is going, okay, I know who God is. I'm, I'm supposed to also bear good fruit. Like that's a churchy term of like we, I want to look different. And Jesus is like, Jesus talks about how, you know, you will look different. You should look different. How do you, as a church, as like a, as someone of the faith who believes in who Jesus is, as a Christian, how do you carry that responsibility of, I do want to conduct myself differently. I do mm-hmm. want to walk in a way that is right, even if people around me don't. And not that I'm throwing that in people's faces, but I do want to be someone who, someone walking by would be like, wow, that's like a really upstanding person something about that person is really appealing to me right i think that's a very biblical concept how does a christian do that without then setting themselves up to topple when they inevitably are not quite able yeah. to like keep that going <laughs> to sustain that I, I think i think you sort of said it in the question um which is you do it mm. you don't talk about it mm. you know um, you do the right next right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't talk about doing the next right thing. So um, uh, I'm not going to talk about how I don't go partying on Saturday nights. You know, I just don't. Mm-hmm. And my friends go, well, why don't you want to go out tonight? Well, I'm, it's just not really what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, but your actions actually speak volumes, right? Uh, I, I think that may be ob- oversimplifying it. I don't know. But um but I think if we are more, if we're more, you know, we need to be living lives in step with uh, how the Holy Spirit leads us, and lives that are, you know, constantly seeking to separate ourselves from our sin, and mm-hmm. and you know, and to try to be sinless, be more like Jesus. Um, yeah. I, so I would never sit here and say like, you know, don't worry about your sin, or advocate like. Dude, you know, sin all you want. You just mm-hmm. tell everybody you're being authentic. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, we have an ob- you know we have a a calling from God and a blessing by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can live lives more and more in line with Him and and and, and with with less and less sin. So mm-hmm. we, but if we spend a lot of time talking about our lives as sinless or our lives the way we're doing that, um, then we run into this risk of yeah, but you may not be in some areas mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden we live in a gotcha world yeah and so people are always looking for that mm-hmm. you know what i mean um, yeah so it really it's it's a credibility issue um you know i was uh, a lawyer for 20 years and 
um, I know from, you know, whether it's, you know, just depositions of people or whatever, whenever you've got somebody, uh, you know, if you're trying to undermine them, you're trying to undermine a witness, you, you always want to hit the credibility issues. Mm. You want to show that this person says one thing, but maybe does another. Mm-hmm. Um, and the minute that you can get, you know, you can have somebody with the most finely tuned, seemingly um, impenetrable intellectual argument. Like, man, that person just, you know, we can't, we can't penetrate him. Mm. But if he gets on that stand and all of a sudden I ask, yeah, but, you know, what about this aspect of your life where you were dishonest with, mm. you know, I don't know, finances or something like mm. that? Suddenly, no matter how good his argument, his credibility is lost. question, yeah. His ethos is gone. Yeah. And, um, and so I think, you know, I think sometimes we need to be, just pay attention to that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Do you think in today's world there's a lot more talking about what we should do than maybe in the past, like in American culture. Like, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if there's, is more of that. And I think if we look at, if American culture has this Christian influence that it's kind of like, we're not really concerned with that as much anymore. I think it's a general assessment I would make. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's still this moral voice and this moral voice happening, right? Do you think, what do you think that'll do with hypocrisy in the church? Do you, how do you think the church could respond to that? Well, I do think it's an increasing problem Mm. in terms of like the view of the church is hypocritical. Mm. Um, I mean, I think our culture is, it seems like it's more cynical than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. Um, you would know this much more than I would, but even in some of my interactions and studies of Gen Z, you know, um, their biggest issue with the church is it seems to be hypocrisy. I mean, mm-hmm. they've got, they, there's always the problem of evil. There's always these other stumbling blocks. There's mm-hmm. always this too judgmental, but it's this idea that you say one thing, but you do another. Yeah. And it's almost as if our culture is just expecting that now. Mm-hmm. And they're just looking for the for the next time somebody's going to stumble, and it's like, ah, uh-huh, I showed you know, I, I, you know, it's just this this pervasive level of cynicism, um, which I actually think is a tremendous opportunity for the church. Mm. Why do you say that? Because I think we have the opportunity to stand in and be real mm. and be authentic. When you've got so many people who are defining themselves and their identity on. Um, on, on sort of who they are on social media, mm. you know, what, what angle they take on their Instagram pic or, you know, what, what lens they use or whatever it is, you know, mm. um, you know, all these people so kind of searching for like, you know, trying to portray themselves as something that maybe they're not, you know, um, we live in a time where like there's fraud everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's identity theft everywhere. There's people misrepresenting their ide- identities everywhere, you know, and so you've got all these things going on where there's no, there's no real, you know, nothing's real. No one's real anymore is a sense that I, I sometimes get. Mm. And like, even with identity theft, it's like, wh- why, why, why do you steal something? You're stealing something you don't have. Mm. So I think the church has an opportunity to stand up and, and, um, and say, you know, we're, we really are about loving you as you are and loving you as God made you and exploring mm-hmm. who you are and exploring why you matter and mm-hmm. why God knit you together in the womb and how, why you're wonderfully made. And all that sounds kind of wishy-washy maybe or like, you know, unicorns and fairy tales, but it's it's the truth. And I think it's desperately what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. So, um, so in a world where there is a lot of hypocrisy, you know, if more Christians can stand up and say, you know, I'm broken and I'm okay. And let me tell you why. Mm. It might just be a message that the world needs. Yeah. How do you think, how do you think Christians can do that? Like how, how can, how can that be it? Like on what platform does that work? 
Because I think people are also at the same time drawn to someone who's like, I've, I've beat the system. You know, I'm, I'm this good. I'm this excellent at this. And so, and I think that is what happens with like Christian celebrities who were like, wow, like look at how excellent they are. Like, and they're popular, you know? Yeah. So how do you, because even as you mentioned, not it's doing, not saying how, how does, how does that work in a way that is shown and communicates to someone who's hungry for authenticity that there is authenticity in in what the in, in the church and who Christ is and, and who the church ought to be. Um, One a, sentence or less. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on some levels, if I if I knew, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think personally, though, it's just being honest with about who you are, um, not being afraid to, to share um, your struggles. Um, it's it's. It's a really, I mean, I, I don't want to, to, to oversimplify the issue because for, especially for pastors and church leaders, it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's a hard line. Mm-hmm. On one level, um, you know, we have an obligation to live lives and, um, and proclaim, you know, um, lives or lifestyles that um, are in keeping with, with, with God's will and God's law. And... Um, and so it's it's you know we can't just stand up and be like do whatever you want because you as I said earlier because you're a sinner, mm-hmm. um, but by the same token, you know this pressure to be like sinless is is pushing us in a direction that we can't attain mm-hmm. because we're all we're all sinners. I um, I, I think um, at, for for Christians. Um, the significance of daily confession mm. can't be under underscored enough. Uh, I think we we need to personally be in that space of saying, "Okay, God, search me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See mm. if there's any offensive way without you know within me and lead me your way everlasting." And, and the second you ask that question, God will do it. Mm. Um, and if we get into the practice of that and becoming more aware of that, um, you know, not only will we um, you know, find find the strength and the wisdom to be able to to walk more. You know, with with you know in the Holy, you know, with the with the leading of the Holy Spirit, um, but we'll also um, have a sense into kind of the things we struggle with, and a better sense of the things other people struggle with. Mm. And when you know how other people struggle, and when you're when you're attuned to the ins and outs of what it means to be human and struggle with various aspects of sin and and other things um i I think you can you can learn to step into the space with people and say like i you know i let me put it this way because i've said a lot me personally setting aside all the pastor stuff um when i'm struggling with something and somebody can come down and sit next to me and say you know brother i know i know what you're going through because i've been there that that opens my heart. Mm-hmm. And candidly, I have actually, you know, the few times I've been successful in reaching people, I suppose, or whatever, not, I mean, has been when I've, you know, oftentimes has been when somebody's going through something I personally have gone through. And mm-hmm. I sat down and said, you know, brother, and there's been some things I've gone through that, you know, I I wasn't, I wasn't um, a Christian for 28 years of my life. There's mm-hmm. things I've done that I can sit down with somebody and be like, yeah, I've been there. And they'll look at me and go like, you? Mm. And there's the, but you're a pastor. Yes, but I wasn't always a pastor. Mm. And so when you can step into that space with people, that's what Jesus did, right? Mm. He was sinless, but he stepped in with sinners. Yeah, I think it's easy to talk about, it's easier to talk about external conflict you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, uh, you know, and when, and this happens a lot whenever you're in a group of, I mean, any age Christians, honestly, it's like, oh, what are your prayer requests? Well, my grandma is sick and this person has this bad thing happening. It's like, how often is it? I'm really struggling with pornography or mm-hmm. I'm really like, I just am really angry. Like I have no reason to be, I'm just ticked, <laughs> you know? And that's, I, whenever I hear someone who does that, I'm always like, wow, you're, 
that's so encouraging. Like I, I, you're you're seeking this thing that you're claiming, and yeah. it's not just oh these all everything in my life is external conflict. It's like wow, I wish that were the case for my life because <laughs> yeah. it definitely isn't. And often when it is, it's probably coming from some level of my own internal conflict. Sometimes, um, so I think yeah, leading in that way. And it is tricky because like, how do you project that from the stage, you know, from the pulpit? And, mm. and even as you said, like, what does that look like? Even the way you described it was like, well, I wasn't, I haven't always been a pastor, but like, what about a pastor who is like, I'm struggling with this thing, you know, I'm struggling with whatever, whatever, maybe if it's pornography or other things, you know, how, how does, how do they, how are they free to to be human, but also then the church respond in a way that's like, all right, you you shouldn't be in this position of leadership maybe, but you're yeah. still one of us. Like this is still, because I think, I wonder if there's a pressure from someone who's, who, you know, it starts there. It starts with something small enough that you can bring up, but then it kind of slowly transitions to something that's like, oh, this is starting to be like the cliff is rising and the consequences of me saying, I've been doing this or I'm struggling with this are getting getting steeper mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we find out about some crazy scandal you know and then it's like well now you're not one of us anymore it's like it's too late you know you're so how what is it's a vicious cycle yeah yeah what what do you think is a healthy a healthy cycle of that like that's a that's a hard question i don't you know i mean i mean when we look at some of the some of the people who've fallen you know I and mean, you just look at kind of what they struggled with mm -hmm. um there's one thing they all have in common, whether it's, you know, Mark Driscoll's anger issues, whether it's Ravi Zacharias's, uh, you know, issues with, mm -hmm. with, with women or, or any number of them. Um, um, it seems to be that they had to, they felt they had to isolate themselves and they couldn't get help. They didn't seek help mm. because they couldn't seek help because that wasn't who they are. They're not people who need help. Mm. Um, and that's the problem. I, I think we need to, you know, for pastors who are struggling with any, you know, any of these issues, um, they need to seek help. They need to feel like they can seek help. Um, if the issue is, is one that compromises their ability to lead shepherd a flock for whether it's permanently or for some period of time, um, you know, then the, the main means stepping away from that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the absolute worst thing is, is to continue in that position, not seek the help because that's really kind of what happens. You know, mm -hmm. Joe Aldrich, um, in his book, Lifestyle Evangelism, uh, he, he draws a really important distinction, I think, for us to, to, to think about as, um, you know, and, and for people to, I wish, I wish more people who weren't Christian looking at the church could kind of discern this as well, but he draws this distinction between avoiding evil and avoiding the appearance of evil. Mm. Um, we should always avoid evil. Mm -hmm. No matter what, we should always avoid evil. Um, we can't always avoid the appearance of evil. Yeah. Um, as and that's that's true. That's not just pastors. That's I think Christians. that's true of Jesus. Of you know, I think well, it's exactly right. Yeah. Like I think that's a thought I've had. Just and this is a little bit of a tangent, but like the ability to be misinterpreted doesn't make you a bad communicator, right? Like Jesus yep. said things that were like, whoa, what you, wait, what? <laughs> yep. You know, and so, yeah, and to this topic, yeah, like well, you're going to, yeah. The goal is not, I, I never look evil. Because even that is is a it's a pride building thing. It's like, well, we know you you are at mm -hmm. least a little, you know, like, so if 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 that's what your platform is, then you're, you're building the wrong tower. Yep. Yeah, I mean, look at Jesus. He couldn't avoid the appearance of evil and not go dine with sinners. Mm. But he had to dine with sinners. That's what he was called to do. He says, I'm a physician. Yeah. I, came for the, I came for the sick. Um, he didn't avoid the appearance of, of, of evil in that. You know, he wasn't so wrapped up in, in his own credibility that he didn't dine with sinners. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think we might do that. We might sort of pull together and, and, and say, well, you know, I really can't associate with that person or, or, or this person or that person, because if I do that, you know, those other people are going to look at me and think I'm like that person. And yeah. now all of a sudden I'll be a Christian hypocrite. Yeah. Um, now, if that other person is 
you know, going to strip clubs all the time and I'm going with that person to the strip club, that's another question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the line's a little less blurry there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I can't reach that guy who desperately needs Jesus and avoid, you know, people looking at me and going, why is he hanging out with that guy? One of the things you've discussed in this is the idea that hypocrisy happens. And we also, we're not talking about how the hypocrisy happens outside the church, but we all know it does. It's just, this is about our Christians, hypocrites, right? But we know hypocrisy exists. There's also this hunger for authenticity. Um, but it sounds like the church and Christianity, when it's when it's being executed right, when we're following what the Bible says, like there's like a built-in space for that, right? Hypocrisy, mm -hmm. which I don't know, I think sounds different than anywhere else where it's like you either need to execute or you're just a failure. But somehow in the Bible, in the church, there's room for like, w this is the expectation and you're being changed and you're going to mess up, <laughs> you know, and you're going to fail. And so, and even like confession, right? How that speaks to that. So mm -hmm. I don't know, what are your, what are your thoughts on the built in nature of maybe hypocrisy is like taken into account in the system, you know, for lack of a better word of Christianity. Yeah. I don't know that I would say that the proper, for lack of a better term, Christian sort of faith or ethic or, you know, a belief system has an element of hypocrisy that's built in that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, I mean, hypocrisy is a sin like every other sin and we want to avoid it. Um, I would say that though, we have the, the absolute sheer delight of the only faith system. First of all, the only one that's true, but the only faith system that builds in grace. Mm. So when you stumble, whether it's hypocrisy or any other sin, we have the ability to go before Jesus and confess it and say, you know, I, I stumble. And just like you're saying, you know, um, his response is, I forgive you, which is another way of saying, yeah, these things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Get up and let's try again. And, you know, there's been times in my life where I've, it's been the same thing. Like, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. Yeah, these things are going to happen. Let's do this again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's such a beautiful thing when you think about it. And it's really almost tragic that we undermine that message when we try to be perfect and mm -hmm. we're not. So I guess what I would say is there's more of a built-in um, capacity for authenticity mm. than sometimes we give the gospel credit for. We okay. can be more real um, um, with people if we, you know, that's I suppose how I would look at it. But, but the significant thing being, um, you know, every other faith either, you know, either God does not exist and therefore none of this matters, right? I mean, why... Why worry about any form of sin? Just make sure you survive and survive to the, the glory of yourself. Um, or God is a deistic God who's far away, wound things up, left you to be, and you're just kind of kind of walking around. And, and, you know, that's almost the same thing. Or God is the God of some other, of some religions that sets a performance standard and he's seeing if you live up to it. And whether you get there or not, you're never going to know. Mm. Um, you know, th those are all brutal, pretty brutal belief systems, worldviews. Mm. I don't know why people hold to them and still have hope. But we have the system where I know you're going to stumble. Mm. And you can own it. Um, and you should own it. But I'm not going to hold it over your head like the sword of Damocles. Uh, mm. I'm going to forgive you and we're going to keep working on this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the idea of our sins being thrown into the sea of forgetfulness mm -hmm. is crazy. Like, because I don't forget, you know, and I think, and that's, it's so unlike anything we experience ever in any other relationship, you know, there's no absolute forgetness, you know, mm -hmm. there's like, it's, and we don't feel that, right? Like we think, and I think forgiveness is just so huge. And, and it, it is 
the healing for hypocrisy because hypocrisy is like well i guess this is just who i am mm -hmm. and so i just have to be both these things and i'm trying to sustain these two faces mm -hmm. and that's that's what hypocrisy does and that's like the poison but forgiveness is no this isn't who you are and you're now wiped clean and if you mm -hmm. realize that then it's like oh i don't have to sustain this face it's like your permission to drop this permission to not be that wayward way that you've been because it's not right behind you it's gone Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. And that's, that is the freedom from hypocrisy. Yeah. It's so freeing. Mm. Think about it. I mean, I love what you said there. I love that, um, you know, hypocrisy, the Greek word literally is translated pretender, right? Mm. And you think about like, you know, that's, that's the world so many people live in as pretenders. We talked about this a little earlier. It's mm -hmm. like, I am really this, but I've got to hold myself out to be this. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, where we can stand up and be like, just be real. It's okay to be who you are because that God made you. He loves you. He knows you're going to fall short. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's it's just it is so freeing. It is so freeing. And and you think about it. I mean, we talked a little earlier about kind of the relationship. Our relationship with God is. I relate a lot with with sort of uh, as a father and as having been a son, you know, the relationship I have with my kids. And I think about, well, of course, I mean, I would never like, you know, say to my kid who's three years old and then decided and threw his Cheerios across the, the you know, kitchen in a tantrum, I'm done, your performance is out, mm. you're gone. I'm like, oh my gosh, what did you do? Of course, mm. we need to correct this. But, and, and when, when the tears come, you still hold the child, and you know, mm. and and when your teenager drives too fast or gets in a car accident or does something stupid, mm. you don't walk away. You're per why? Because you have that relationship. You seek. You eagerly, eagerly seek that relationship mm -hmm. with that child because you love them so dearly. That's what God has for us. That's the right relationship that we have with God, and um, yeah, um, you know, to be able to to relate to people the depth of that relationship um just it's just the astounding reality of what's available to us and it's it, when you really contemplate it you ask yourself why would i reject this why would i choose mm -hmm. any other direction yeah it's it's identity right and mm -hmm. it's and people are drawn to rooted identity someone who's like this is who i am um i think that's an appealing thing and that's a stabilizing thing right even in, even no matter what that is when someone's like this is who i am you're like if you're you know learning a sport and you like see the coach and they're like i am the baseball guy it's like oh that's really reassuring because now i know how to learn yeah. from you right but i think yeah who you are that's that's the question of hypocrisy right it's because there's it's the two-facedness is pretending and so it's the solution is a rooting in identity. And I think, again, that's why scripture's discussion on sin and who we are is so important, not just this idea of I need to do better, but like, all right, no, but who are you? I remember reading somewhere um, where someone was talking about, you know, fighting temptation even, and I think that ties into this this whole idea and and how like we memorize a lot of verses of like what to do, not mm -hmm. who we are, like who who am I to God? And if I really believe that, that would change how I act. And, and, and in turn, that would, that would kind of, it just peels the face away. And it's like, this mm -hmm. is who I am. And, and you see that in who the person of Jesus is. Like he's mm -hmm. just, when you read the story of who Jesus is and what he did as he walked around among people, it's just, you know, you just can't question the fact that he was just who he said he is. He just was, there was no like, oh, I wonder how Jesus really feels about this. Like, no, we know, <laughs> we know exactly how he feels about this. And and he wasn't duplicitous and there wasn't any sense of I say this and do this. I mean, yeah, for, you know, for a man who says like, you know, I've came not to be served, but to serve and then die this terrible death. That's, 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 I don't know. Yeah. That's a true identity and action inter interwoven. Yeah, and you know it when you're around people who are filled with the Spirit and, and walking with the Spirit. You sort of, there's just something, a quality, it truly is a quality about, you know, somebody who's got that peace. Um, there's been a few a few people, you know, 
not a whole lot, you know, um, but a few people in my life that have been inexplicable to me. Mm. And it's never because of what they say. Mm. It's because of the decisions they make. It's because of, you know, um, I had a guy uh, I used to work with when I was back in a journalist and, um, and he was, he just seemed to always do the right thing. And he didn't get angry and he didn't, you know, say gossipy things about people. And, you know, even all the, what we call the respectable sins, right? I mean, all the, you know, he just didn't seem to stumble. Mm. And I was like, what is it about this guy that makes him so good? <laughs> you mm. know, uh, and this was a time where I wasn't, I wasn't a believer at that point, but I, I paid attention to that. And I, 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 I I know from his witness that he's a believer. I never confirmed that because mm. I never sought that relationship with with, with this coworker. But, um, but just the way he carried himself, just you know, there's people like that. Mm-hmm. And, and and when 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 the way we lead our lives becomes our witness, then we don't have to worry about hypocrisy mm. because it's just the truth. Mm. There's no pretending. But. When, we, when the way we say we lead our lives, when we start to get into this is how we, you know, we say we say what we do, that's when we get to a stumbling block of mm. putting on that mask and maybe being something we're not. Yeah. It's a tricky place to be. Mm. You mentioned authenticity. Um, what do you think, because I think that is a huge value in, in like particularly a younger generation, you know, like Gen Z type generation, but just in general, that's a, increasingly used word about someone who's respectable and you know mm-hmm. admirable and obviously there's disagreement about you know who are you authentic to and even like even as believers like you can be authentic to who you are as someone who has the flesh and has this desire to do wrong thing and that's authentic in a way but also are you being authentic to who you are as a son of god and a daughter of god um but how do you is authenticity the end? Is it just like, I'm just being honest. I'm just, you know, owning mm. my drive and inner mechanisms that make me this way and want this thing and like this thing and not like this thing. What are, you, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, Jesus is the end. Mm. <laughs> I mean, um, but yeah, and authenticity, you know, maybe is one of the means. Um, mm. Um, but you know, I, you know, I think authenticity has become now sort of a buzzword. Like, you know, the authenticity is the thing. You know, it's like, mm. but it doesn't make it any less important. Um, I, I think sometimes where there's conf- where there's um, um, some blurring of the lines or confusion um, is when we kind of mix these concepts of true authenticity with being relatable, mm. right? I think sometimes like. You know, you, we got some pastors on the circuit now or whatever, you know, pe- big, big name people um, who are really, you know, like they just want to be relatable to the culture. And uh, and I'm not dismissing that or dissing it or anything else like that. I'm saying, you know, I think we do need on some level to relate to the culture. But it's like I'm going to be so authentic and I'm going to, you know, do it by hanging out with the right people. But then you're hanging out with Justin Bieber, which is no problem with that, except we've all seen where that experiment went. Um, or you're hanging out with, you know, or, or you're, you're striving so hard to be relatable as being like that authentic guy that every, you know, I get you mm-hmm. guy. But authenticity is not that. Authenticity mm-hmm. is just being real about who you are. And that's almost just another form of just pretending. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? So, so I, think, I think when we're, we're talking about like what does it mean to be authentic, we should really define what authenticity is. And it's... Mm-hmm. it's it's um, being real about the struggles that you have, um, and and not necessarily um, just saying, "Oh, I can relate." I'm trying to relate to you know the culture, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So these are, these are important discussions for for first to have in the church i think Mm -hmm. thanks for being here alec it's great to talk with you and great to discuss this question with you awesome thank you thanks for joining us i hope you enjoyed today's episode with pastor alec be sure to like and subscribe for new episodes every wednesday for more information go to digdeeperdc.com